Hi, this is George from The Return of the King. In order to know the day and year of the rapture, we have to understand a lot of things correctly, which is not always easy to do. When Paul says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. He's telling us the rapture will occur some year on the Feast of Trumpets. Paul is a Jewish rabbi. When Paul says, At the last trump, any Jewish person at the time of Paul would understand perfectly that he's speaking of the Feast of Trumpets. If we assume that this understanding is correct, then all the signs that converge on Pentecost, the Feast of Harvest, make sense. Without this understanding, that he's telling us the day of the rapture, June 15th should have been the day, the day we were looking at. The signs of the rapture had to appear on the true date of Pentecost because Pentecost is about the harvest of the saints. The harvest of the saints is the rapture. The closing or fulfillment of Pentecost is the rapture. It brings the church age, the age of grace, to an end. It doesn't have to occur on the day of Pentecost. By Paul telling us the day of the rapture, the signs appearing on Pentecost are confirming the year of the rapture, not the day. For me, this takes care of a very key problem. Paul is a rabbi. Most Christians at this time are Jews. That's how they would have interpreted what Paul said that the rapture is going to occur on the Feast of Trumpets. The Last Trump, another name for Rosh Hashanah, is the festival of the Last Trump. He then goes on to say that many Jewish scholars, including Theodor Gaster, have taught that the festival of Rosh Hashanah was called the Festival of the Last Trump from ancient times. The Apostle Paul taught that the rapture would occur at the Last Trump and with the shout or Torah of the Archangel. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. And then he goes on to say, the Nazal part of the ritual for Rosh Hashanah consists of the Zirkanat or Book of Remembrance being opened and the Nazal occurring. Nazal is the Hebrew word that corresponds to the Greek word harpazo. Harpazo is the New Testament Greek word we translate as rapture. Nazal means a catching away. Open ye gates, that the righteous nation, which keepeth the truth, may enter in. Isaiah mentions that the gates are open, which refers to Rosh Hashanah. Notice that the resurrection of the dead occurs at the same time the righteous nation enters into the bridal chamber and is hidden until the indignation is past. Thy dead men shall live, together with my dead body they shall arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place, to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood, and shall no more cover her slain. Rosh Hashanah is also called Yam HaMalech, or Day of the King. It is the time of Messiah's coronation and the beginning of his kingdom. If a new king was to be crowned that year, the coronation would occur on the festival of Rosh Hashanah, and a king always has his bride with him at his coronation. When we look at the heavens, we see the story of the rapture from the account of the 153 fish on the 15th day of the third month. Jupiter is in the constellation of the Christian, Pisces. Mars is in the constellation of the dragon in the sea. Venus, the bright morning star, is in the constellation of the Lamb, exactly what one would expect on the day of the rapture. But if we look at this day, believing that Paul is telling us the day of the rapture, the meaning of what we see changes. What it tells us now is that the church age, the age of grace, is coming to a close. It's the rapture that brings it to a close. When we leave, the restrainer, the Holy Spirit, leaves with us. Pentecost is a harvest feast. Harvests are not set by dates. They occur when the fields are ready, when the harvest will give the greatest yield. To maximize the number of saints in the harvest, the harvest should be as late as possible, right to the moment the tribulation begins. On Pentecost, all males are required to meet with God. The moon is full on the feast days, meetings with God. This symbolizes our meeting with God. Because it's symbolic, it doesn't mean the moon has to be full at the rapture. In the account of the 153 fish, the 153 fish are brought to Jesus, symbolic of the rapture. 
Jupiter from the Revelation 12 sign arrives 1,726 days from the Revelation 12 sign in the constellations of the Christian Pisces. 726 in Strong's is Harpazo, Rapture. Then we have the alignment of these three stars. In the Revelation 12 sign at dawn, a three-star alignment occurs in the constellation of Leo. On the day of Pentecost, another three-star alignment occurs in the constellation of Taurus. When we overlay them, we find that they match. They align perfectly. Then there's the dream of the race in Egypt, the finish on the right next to Jupiter. The alignment of the pyramids on this day, the race is a marathon, 26.2 miles. The numerical value of God is 26. When you have this much rapture imagery on the day of Pentecost, the Feast of Harvest, you have to see that this is a very high watch day, even if you believe the rapture is on the Feast of Trumpets because of Paul. You definitely would want to be watching on this day. Because God has given me dreams, answered my requests of him, it puts me between a rock and a hard place. If these supernatural events are truly from God, they must eventually lead to the correct day. God has decided to make this a journey of faith. Will I trust him on the journey or will I quit? And I cannot quit. I believe the testing of faith is over now and the Feast of Trumpets will be the day. And here's why. On the day I quit my job to focus on these videos, I asked the Lord to show me something, to know that I was on the right track. Within 10 minutes, he did something. This is the short version. I did a whole video on this. When I was looking for my spare mouse, which in three and a half years I've never misplaced, it's always on my desk. I can't find it. I give up, I go upstairs and I come back. And when I come back, here it is, just as you see it, impossible to miss. When I see the way things are arranged, I'm sure there's a story here. About a month later, I wake up at 2.30 in the morning and I understand what the story is. And here's what that story is. The water glass filled with water represents the sea. The two mice represent the two fishes we see in the heavens. First the dead in Christ, and then we who are alive. The mouse pad is manufactured by rocket fish, another symbol of the sea. And when we leave, it will be the fish, the Christian that rockets into the heavens to meet Jesus in the air. The pen is the pilot G207. The pen is parallel with the mice. It's telling us we are going up. It's exactly in line with the seven compartment pillbox, pointing us to our ultimate destination, which is heaven. G2, going to heaven, and will be gone for seven years. The Christmas tree symbolizes Christ. It begins with Christ. The tape measure symbolizes distance, and when we go up, we meet with Christ in the air. Then he takes us to heaven. The pillbox has seven compartments. We will be gone for seven years. The compartments also represent rooms. Jesus said this, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. Christmas napkins. The napkins represent Christ. The white case represents the bridal chamber. A Jewish wedding lasts for seven days. Christ our groom will come and take his bride to heaven and we will celebrate for seven years. Isaiah tells us this. Come, my people, enter into your chambers and shut the doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until the fury has passed by. For behold, the Lord is coming out from his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. And the earth will disclose the blood shed on it and will no more cover its slain. The napkins, the seven compartment pillbox, and the case symbolize heaven. So what's in the case? It's a blood pressure monitor. It symbolizes the Christian who is saved by the blood of Jesus. In Isaiah we read, Open ye the gates, that the righteous nation, which keepeth the truth, may enter in. Isaiah mentioned the gates are open, which refers to Rosh Hashanah. And in this passage, we read, Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers. It's on Rosh Hashanah, then, that we enter the bridal chamber. What happened here confirms for me that when Paul says at the last trump, 
He's telling us the day of the rapture, the Feast of Trumpets, the day we enter into the bridal chamber. That being the case, everything we saw converge on June 15th makes sense. I plan on doing a number of detailed videos between now and the Feast of Trumpets. Not sure when the next one will come out, probably a month away. For me, knowing that we are leaving this year and soon brings me comfort because it's not looking good out there and it's getting worse by the hour. Thanks for watching.